Hello! This is the second and final part of my chemisio crocheting and chemise sewing adventures. So this is where I cut and sew the fabric part of the chemise, assemble the crochet yoke, crochet the border for the yoke, and finally sew the whole thing together, then put it on and proceed to haunt Mystic Gardens at daybreak. We begin with the cutting out and sewing of the fabric, because I feel that part was the quickest and most straightforward to do. I chose a truly Victorian chemise pattern for this project, which is from the Edwardian period, so it's dated later than my crochet yoke pattern, which is from 1888. I chose this pattern nonetheless, because it has gathering both at the center front and the center back, which was common for chemises in the late 1800s, and I also particularly like the way it looks. But alas, I didn't find a chemise pattern, or any extant chemises for that matter, that have the exact construction mine will have, where the crochet yoke also includes the sleeves, and it's not just added on lace, so I shall have to do some modifications on the pattern if I want it to match my yoke. First, we assemble and cut out the pattern. When I wanted to start cutting out the fabric, however, I realized the one I chose, and which I had thought to be a nearly perfect match for the color of the crochet lace, was in fact several shades lighter than the lace, so consequently I went on a hunt for some more appropriately colored cotton. You can see the considerable difference between my first and second choice here. The second one is still far from an exact match, especially on video, but in real life I think they work pretty well together. I have found some examples of chemises where the lace is a markedly different color than the fabric, but I felt the difference between my lace and my first choice of fabric, while too much to pass off as even remotely similar, was not quite different enough. So as I mentioned, because the pattern includes a yoke, we have to cut it to fit the crochet yoke. This here is the yoke part of the pattern. Ok, so I first need to decide how to match my yoke to my actual chemise. One option is to do it like this. This is the bottom edge of my yoke and I could just basically extend the chemise and attach them like this. But I'm afraid that this way the straps of the yoke would be very far off on my shoulder and maybe it would slide off. And maybe also this would be bothersome to be added to the armhole under the armpit basically. So the other option I have is to mess. And I would just cut here. This would be a very easy solution for me to cut the chemise, to cut the fabric for the chemise, but I don't think it would be the best. So I think we'll have to find a kind of happy medium where I treat this part of the yoke as part of the chemise, as part of the body of the chemise, and this part of the yoke as basically added lace that you're supposed to add to the armhole anyway. So I just mark the pattern, cut the fabric and hope for the best. I will not however cut the paper pattern itself, I just fold it. Maybe folding this part away will make the chemise a little less wide, but because of all the gathering in the front and also because of the stretchiness of the lace yoke, I think we can get away with that. So my fabric is wide enough to accommodate the length of the chemise. And so I will cut it on the cross grain. So I can't remember, I might have forgotten to film this, but I actually extended the pattern to make the chemise a bit longer by about a little more than 10 inches. And I did that by extending this line here and basically copying the shape of the bottom of the skirt to here. When the cutting is done, the front and the back of the chemise gets pinned right sides together. Because the pattern has a built-in seam allowance, we mark the actual edge of the pattern pieces with a pencil. And then we sew the sides of the chemise together with the backstitch along the marked line.
We tidy up the seam allowance by clipping it on one side, then folding the other side over it and finishing it with a felling stitch. I also hem the top of the chemise where the yoke will be attached, though this might not have been the most practical thing to do. And now for the assembling of the yoke. So we have 26 of these little crochet circles, which if you haven't seen the making of, you can watch it on my channel as well. This took considerably more time than I'd anticipated, to the point where it felt like it would never ever be done, but thankfully we got through it in the end. So the little circles go together like so, 6 circles go across the chest, and 6 across the back, 4 circles each for the straps, and 3 for each underarm. We have 18 loops around each circle, and we sew together the circles across the chest like this. We join every circle to the next by sewing together 3 loops of each circle on each side, leaving 6 loops free at the top and at the bottom of both circles. When we are done with the front and the back of the crochet yoke, we assemble the straps. For these also, we sew together 3 loops of 2 neighboring circles, but here we leave 3 loops free inside and 9 loops free outside, so that we end up with a sort of half circle shape for both straps. When that is done, we attach the straps to the front and the back by leaving 3 loops free here and sewing together 3 loops here, so that we are left with 9 free loops here on the bottom, where the circle for the underarm will be sewn on, like so. We sew both straps both to the front and to the back. Now we attach one circle for the underarm, first to the two circles to which we attach the straps, thereby closing the yoke like this. We sew together three loops and leave three loops free on each side. Then we sew on the third of the circles that make up the underarm. This is the one in the center. For these two we sew together three loops and this time we leave two loops free on the inside of the underarm and seven free on the outside. We do this on both sides, thereby closing the underarms. Now that the yoke is assembled, we crochet a border around the yoke and around the armholes. The border around the neck consists of 6 rows. For the first one, we draw the thread through the loop at the joint of 2 circles, or wheels, anywhere around the neck. We chain 4, crochet 2 double crochets, then 3 treble crochets under the next loop. Then we crochet 3 chain stitches, 1 treble crochet under the next loop, and repeat this 3 more times, then crochet 3 chain stitches again, and 3 treble crochets under the next loop. Then crochet 3 treble crochets under the next loop again, this is the place where 2 wheels are joined. Now we crochet 3 treble crochets each again under the next 2 loops, then chain 3 and repeat from the single treble crochets again. We do this all around the neck in theory, but the pattern changes around the straps in fact. We always do the 4 groups of 3 treble crochets at the joint of 2 wheels, but the number of single treble crochets in between is defined by the number of free loops the wheels actually have. We begin the second row with 7 chain stitches, then we crochet 1 treble crochet under the 3 chain stitches of the preceding row. We chain 3, 
crochet one treble crochet in the next hole, then we crochet one treble crochet in every hole, and one treble crochet in the center of each of the four groups of treble crochets, so after the sixth treble crochet. We always crochet three chain stitches between the treble crochets in this row. On the third row, we crochet three treble crochets in the first hole. I replace the first treble crochet with four chain stitches here, then crochet two chain stitches and crochet three treble crochets in the next hole. We chain three again and repeat this all around the neck. The fourth row begins with one treble crochet under the two chain stitches of the previous row, then we crochet three chain stitches, do one treble crochet in the next hole, chain three again and repeat this all around the row. On the fifth row, we crochet one single crochet in the first hole, then chain four, crochet three double crochets in the next hole, chain four again, crochet a single crochet in the next hole, chain four, and repeat from the three double crochets again. The last sixth row begins with a single crochet in the first of the three double crochets of the preceding row, then we crochet three chain stitches, one single crochet over the next double crochet of the previous row, three chain stitches again, and one more single crochet into the last of the three double crochets. Now we chain five and repeat from the first single crochet. We crochet basically the same border around both of the sleeves. The only difference is that, over the wheel that's right under the arm, we crochet 24 double crochets, 3 double crochets in every loop, and at both sides of the joining of the wheels, so we omit the 3 chain stitches all together between double crochets here. Now all that's left is to crochet around the bottom of the yoke where the fabric will be joined. First two rows of this border are the same as for the neck and for the sleeves, and for the third row we crochet 5 double crochets in each hole. And now we get to attach the yoke to the chemise. As the middle front and the middle back is gathered, we run two rows of gathering stitch in the middle. I left 8 cm on both sides plain and gathered the middle 10 cm on both the front and the back. We now pin the front of the yoke to the front of the chemise, we pin 8 cm on both sides, then gather the middle 10 cm of chemise into the remaining part of the yoke. Then we sew on the crochet yoke with a whip stitch. We finished the hem of the chemise with a felling stitch, and now it's ready to be worn under corsets, dresses, or in my case as a nightgown. This particular piece of clothing somehow makes me imagine myself wandering around an old, slightly spooky cottage alone in the dark, with a solitary candle as defense against the mysterious noises of the night that my everyday brain, firmly planted in reality, knows to be perfectly explainable by perfectly ordinary reasons, but which my nighttime brain can never wholeheartedly believe nevertheless. You might know that feeling. And so now, that we know my brain has a heart, which I admit to be a very confusing metaphor, and which is arguably the most surreal revelation of this seemingly simple project that however took an unforgivably long time to complete, I say goodbye for now.